Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. It's so good to to have Christian back singing in the house. I'm just uh, thankful tonight. I don't know about you, but I needed that song. How about you? Amen. Amen. I love you tonight, church. I'm... Just overwhelmed with the goodness of God. You know, when Christian was, when she began to cry, I heard the Lord say, you know, the day's coming real soon. You'll never cry another tear. He's going to be with me. He said, I'll wipe every tear away. All the heartaches and struggles that we've had in this world, and let me tell you what, it's a real struggle. Satan's time is short, short, short. You know, I debated whether to preach this. This is really a Sunday morning message, but God said, no, it's my message, and I want you to preach it tonight. This is something that that is really an important word, I think, not only because of the closeness of the hour that we're living in, but also because it's what the Lord really wants to stress tonight to the body of Christ. And when you look, Maybe some people don't really want to see what all is going on in the world. But when you look at all that's going on, I'm truly amazed that he's not come yet. This what I'm going to preach tonight to you. I've looked at this for almost a year before he'd allow me to preach it. I've studied it. I've, 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 I've looked at different avenues, different things. But I want you to know, and I know that you want to know, I want to show you. You know, Jesus said that not only would there be one sign, but he said when you see all these things beginning to come to pass. But I want to break it down in such a way tonight. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to break it down in such a way tonight. Take it from the Scripture, but apply it in such a way that it's so easy to understand for us to see. And I give the God praise for every bit of this. Will you stretch your hands this way? And Father, tonight, first of all, I want to thank you for the healing power <clears throat> that's touching Josh shed. God, I thank you, Father, for your kindness, your goodness in his life. God, that your mighty hands upon their family, upon him right now. And God, I pray over him tonight that you'll continue to heal him speedily quickly, supernaturally. God, I ask you to pour out your spirit tonight in this service that you will bless and you would anoint me, God, and have me to say only what you would have me to say out of my mouth tonight. Lord, hide me behind the cross. Lord, let this word go forth. Let it go forth, God. And God, let us really hear. God, let us be quick to hear. Supernaturally, God, let us hear what you would have us to hear from your heart tonight. Lord, I want to give you all the praise and all the power and all the glory that honors and, I'm sorry, that belongs to you and honors you only, God. God, your word tonight is being fulfilled at such an incredible rate. And God, we know and we believe and we're looking for your quick return for your body, for your church. Now, Lord, bless your people. God, encourage them strengthen them tonight and lift them up and the people of God said amen you may be seated I haven't preached on this particular passage of scripture in probably seven or eight maybe even nine years but as I was preparing for this message I was thinking about I was going to preach another message called the rusty nails but I, he, he, that's not what he wanted me to preach tonight that's for another time. But God took me to the book 
of Daniel. And one of the greatest dreams, even to this time and this hour, was given to a king. Now let me tell you something, church. <clears throat> this king, everybody knows his name. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. But this king, he wasn't a Christian. Yet God still gave him this dream. So I want you to understand that God can speak to anybody. He didn't give this to a Christian. He didn't give it to Daniel. But what he did give to Daniel is he turned around and showed him what he dreamed and then gave Daniel the interpretation. So I want to start here. Now, this is my message. Listen, I want you, this is, let's start right here. I want to take it in order. This is the message. It's called the final push, the end of days, and this dispensation of grace. So before I go into this message, I want to talk about what God wants me to say about these three things. First of all, the Scripture talks about the last days. If you really want to know the truth, the last days began on the, in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. That's when they began. We're not only living in the last days, listen to me, church, but we're living in the last of the last days. When I was thinking about, Lord, why do you want me to call it the final pushes? Because we are down into the hour where the birth pains are so intense and so frequent. Quicker than they've ever been. Stronger than they've ever been. And, and, and this is why the, you know, the Bible talks about in the gospel about the word sorrows is the word for birth pains. Like a woman in travail. You know, suddenly, you know, the birth pains, they intensify until the baby's born. Listen. But the dispensation of grace, people say, what does that mean? Why do we, people don't explain. I want to explain to you. The dispensation of grace that you and I are in right now, the church age right here is the dispensation of grace. And when it's over with, is when God comes for His church. This dispensation of grace is going to run out. The grace that I'm talking about, by grace are you saved, not, not of yourself, nor of works, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. It's a free gift. It's a free pardon. And this is where I want to start because if you're not born again, if you're not, if you, you know, it's not anything that you can do to make God love you any more or any less. It's just the fact that you're going to believe on Him. I believe on Him. I believe on what He did for me, on the sacrifice. And I'm trying to live my life as close to God as I can. I hope you are. But still, it comes down to me trusting in Him and believing that He is God and that He was the one who came. And He went to the cross. How? And why? How He went to the cross. He crawled up on that cross. He grabbed a hold of that cross. And He died on that cross for you and I so we could be saved. So we come all the way down through time from the from the beginning of of, of, the, of the beginning from the Noah Abraham all the way down into the time that you and I have come through Christ. You know the devil's been kicked out of heaven. There's been a great war, and we've come down listening to this dispensation of grace, which really started. If you want to know, I mean, it started really at the cross when he died. That's when it started. That's when grace began. He said, "Whosoever believeth on me." He said, though you were dead, yet shall you live. If you live and believe in me, you'll never die. That's what he said. So this dispensation we're living in, and God spoke to this heathen king, and I want to read what he told him. He said that he had had a dream, and this is Nebuchadnezzar, and here's what he saw. in the, in the second. Uh, this is the second book of Daniel, beginning with the 31st verse. So just bear with me because I'm going to go and I want to show you something. He said, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This is what he saw. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. Here it is. So he's seeing this huge, almost kind of like something like this, something similar to this, but not exactly. He sees this huge-looking thing that's got all these different body parts. It says, the image head was of fine gold, his breast and arms silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. So they were mixed together. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image listen became a great mountain and filled the whole earth now listen to what he said 
Daniel said, This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. The God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. In other words, everything that you and I have is just like here. It doesn't come from our own strength. It comes from above. It comes from God. Nebuchadnezzar forgot that. Let's don't ever forget where our anointing, our strength, everything that we do is because of God. The very life we have, the very breath we have, uh, the power we have, he said right here, everything he's given us, even even all the good things is because of God's goodness in our life. And I'm thankful for that, and you should be also. God has given us all these things, it, just like he did Nebuchadnezzar. He said, And whosoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given to thine hand, and made thee ruler over all them. And the same with us, because the Bible says he's given you and I dominion. I've got dominion. I believe I have dominion. And I, I have to live by faith. I have to confess that I have dominion. You don't, if you don't live by it and you don't confess it, you have dominion over everything. You have to believe it by faith. You have dominion over the powers of hell. You have the dominion over the animals. You have dominion over everything. That's why he said, don't walk in fear, but we have been given dominion. He said he's given us that dominion. Thank God Almighty. That's a powerful word. So he goes on and he talks about the head of gold. He says, Nebuchadnezzar, Thou art this head of gold. And he said, And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, which was the Medio Persian Empire. So it was. And then he said, And after thee shall another kingdom inferior to thee arise, and another kingdom of brass, the third kingdom, he said, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Now that was Grecian. That was, you know, that was Alexander the Great. The Bible talks about. You can read about him in history. About you know he conquered everything. He got to the river Indus, and he sat down. This, and of course, this isn't church. I mean, it's not in church history, but it's in historical history. And I've studied it. He sat down at the river Indus. Everybody's heard of Alexander the Great. He ruled the Grecian Empire, by the way. He sat down at this river and began to weep. And they came to him and said, "Why are you crying?" He said, "Because I don't have anything else to conquer." That's how he was. Let me go on. And then he went on to say. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. This is the Roman Empire, which fell not militarily, but wickedly. They were a wicked empire. This is the same empire that, that we, we know about when Jesus was alive, the Romans. And the reason they all died off is because they were so wicked. So look at me. They didn't die militarily, or they didn't die, they, but they died inwardly. They died because of their sin. They, they, they crumbled within because of their lifestyle. That's what happened to them. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and doeth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Now, I, I can go on and on and on and on, but I want to say where we are. We've come down into the final dispensation, the final kingdom. As a matter of fact, there's some things that I want to show you. Now, I don't want you to get scared about this. I don't want you to worry about this. Because we have got to trust the Lord. I'm going to trust Him. If He said He was going to come get me, I don't know how bad it's going to get before He comes. I don't know everything that's going to happen before He comes. But I want to tell you, I've got some insight into some of these things. And this is why I want to share with you. Number one, in the, in the last days, it talked about how that God would come and destroy the kingdom of the Antichrist. This kingdom is called a globalist new world order. This is the kingdom of the Antichrist. This is what it is. The globalists are here now. They're trying their best to weaken America. Uh, there is an agenda behind everything that's going on in America right now. A lot of people are asleep. I'm not asleep. I've got a lot of, uh, of, of intel. I've got some people that I've, that I've actually uh, I, I've heard some things from them. I've I've seen some videos from them, but you know, I study these things. I, I say, God, you know, what, what is it that you want me to tell the, the church? Well, the Bible is what I'm going to tell the church. The Bible talks about this discovering man that will come on the scene called the Antichrist, and we're seeing this order. We're seeing this being set up all over the world, except here's the deal. There's nations right now in the world that don't want a globalist government. And this is where the issue is arising. This is the problem right now, even in the time that you and I live, because America doesn't want it, and the Russians don't want it. They don't want a globalist. So there's some issues. There's this huge, everybody's...